everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I had in mind today to do a pretty gentle, um, but not entirely passive, lying down practice with some movement into the hips, good amount of stretching, and a bit of strength building thrown in for good measure. This is the kind of practice that I like to do uh, sometimes if I'm practicing at the end of the day or if, I'm, if I've been uh, hiking or gardening a lot or uh, sometimes just if I'm sort of low energy and I want to be near to the ground. Uh, so there's a lot of reasons why you might want to practice that's a little bit less vigor and a little more calming and anchored. Uh, stay connected to your breath through the practice and uh, don't feel rushed. Particularly when we work with the hips, it's a bit like uh, working with a, a timid dog. We have a, a new dog and he's uh, loosening up. The more time we have him in our lives and he has us in his lives, uh, you can sort of feel his energy relaxing. And a lot of times when we first get into the pelvis and the hip area, there's some uh, sort of uncertainty or fear and doubt, some holding. And uh, we don't need to per se like do anything or make eye contact with it and you know assault it. We just want to give it space to exist and stay connected to the breath. And almost always um, a good amount of that tension will just release when it feels safe and when it has uh, the time and opportunity to do so. So not a lot of pushing today. See if you can be patient. Uh, let's start with uh, one round of ohm. So. Get yourself seated in a position that is comfortable for you so you can be upright uh, with the, the minimum possible discomfort or no discomfort if that's available. Shift the shoulders back. Let the eyes close and just gently bring your head slightly back so the weight of the head is experienced really over the tailbone and not forward over the chest. Let your jaw relax. Bring the hands together at the sternum, or you can keep the hands as they are. Take a full breath in. Thank you for being here. So for this practice, really all you really need is um, your mat. If you have a strap, that'll be a, a nice bonus and it'll give you a little bit more leeway and options. And if you have a blanket to put under your head, that'd be great. So a blanket and a strap, that's it, and a place to lie down. So come meet me over on your mat. And come down onto your back. I, I prefer to have a little uh, folded blanket under my head for this kind of work. It just feels a little bit more supportive. I often, oops, I can scoot that little blood push out of the way. Often feels better to take the corners of the mat <laughs> and pull it a little towards my neck and give it even a little bit more definition right there in the nape of my neck so that I feel more supported. Bend your knees, and the feet don't need to be right up close next to you, just about hip width apart. Push into the feet and move the buttocks and the tailbone away from the lumbar spine. So the result of that is the pubic bone comes closer toward the navel. And then set your pelvis down. And release the sense of action, really let the abdomen spread. Rest for a moment and just see the degree to which you might feel any imbalances. Maybe one side of the pelvis has more weight than the other, which is not uncommon and not even necessarily something that needs fixing as much as that uh, we want to be listening and observing in our practice. And then draw the right knee in towards your chest. 
And then hold the knee with your hands, or you could also hold the back of the knee. And this will bring the, drawing the right knee in will bring the, a little bit of rounding of the lower back, and that's good and kind of just getting some length there. Good, and then release and set the right foot down. And draw the left knee in. You can even put a little gentle pressure of the right foot down into the floor, really gentle. Draw the left knee towards you. Take the lower frontal ribs that are below the chest and move them a little bit toward the navel to help encourage length in the back and strengthen the front. And then release. Knees bent, both feet down, and again, portion of the feet, lift the hips a tiny bit. Move the buttocks away from the low back and set the pelvis down. So we're just doing that, repeating that action to keep bringing the low back closer to the floor. And if you're like me and your body has this tendency for these frontal ribs that are between the chest and the navel, these frontal ribs to come up, then it can be helpful to do something similar with the upper back. So push the elbows into the ground and the back of the head into the floor and bring the lower frontal ribs toward the navel and set down again. So just trying to have a, a contained and um, consistent energy through the torso from below the chest to the pelvic rim. And then again, lift the right foot up and catch either the back of the knee or the front of the shin. And you can stay here if, this, if your back is tender or you can gradually extend the left leg out straight on the floor. And keep a little definition in the feet so they are um, sleepy feet. You know, they're not stressed out, they're just alert and engaged. Spread your toes, stretch the skin on the soles of the feet. Good, and then release, bring the right foot down, bend the left knee, left foot in. And again, you can repeat with the right leg bent if that feels like a more conservative choice, if it feels better for you, or you can extend the right leg out straight on the floor. Stay connected to the breath. Take those lower frontal ribs slightly toward the navel. So you can even make this like a precursor to abdominal work. And then release from the left knee, put the left foot down and the right knee, both feet down. Again, push into the feet, lift the buttocks a tiny bit, move the flesh and the musculature and the momentum of the butt towards the heels and set the pelvis back down and push the elbows and the back of the head down and move the frontal ribs towards your navel and set the pelvis, the ribs back down. So what you want to get is a palpable but not overly strenuous sense of connectivity and engagement in the abdominal area. Now again lift the right foot up off the floor and this time interlace your hands behind your right leg. And the idea here is not to pull on the leg, but actually by interlacing the hands, we make sort of a net or a hammock for the leg to push into. So now press your leg into your hands. Press the left foot a tiny little bit into the floor. Stretch the skin on the sole of your right foot, particularly from the arch of your right foot, stretch toward the tips of the toes to help Find and activate the quadricep muscles. Help straighten the leg. Do it in a way that is energizing without force or extreme tension. Good, bend the right leg, right foot down. Lift the left foot up, interlace your hands, switch the lacing, and again, make a net with the interlaced hands and press your left hamstring, left thigh bone, femur, into the hands. Gentle pressure with the right foot into the floor. 
Stretch the skin from the arch of the left foot towards the tippy toes. Like your toes are flashlights, all five toes, each toe is a flashlight beaming light, light beams out through it. Extend from the arch of the foot out through the tips of the toes and beyond. And if you can get that projection of the energy toward the toes and the foot, it helps the very top of the femur move away from the pelvis. And again, bend the left knee, bring the left foot down. Press the feet in the floor, lift the pelvis. Move the musculature and momentum of the buttocks away from the low back and set the pelvis down. Push the elbows and the back of the head into the floor and move the frontal ribs toward the navel and set the rib cage back down. Same thing again, lift the right leg, interlace your hands behind the right thigh, right hamstring. And then if it's available and it feels safe, extend your left leg out straight on the floor. Actions are the same. Extend from the arches of the feet toward the toes on both feet. Keep the musculature around the right knee strong. And remember that we aren't pulling with the arms. In fact, we're using the arms to give the leg something to respond to and organize around. Bend the right knee, bring the right foot to the floor, bend the left knee, left foot off the floor, interlace your hands and switch the laces, extend the left leg straight, and extend the right leg out straight on the floor. Stay connected to the breath. And here again, from the arches of the feet, stretch toward the toes. Find ways to engage with these instructions that brings mental and physical energy into the pose and into the practice, uh, and not in a way that feels constrictive or punitive. In this pose, you can decide you can make it quite vigorous, quite muscular, if that's what you're feeling. You can also make it very quiet, minimally muscular. Good, bend the left knee, set the left foot down, bend the right knee. Try to proprioceptive that your feet are about hip width apart and that when you place them on the ground, they aren't turned out. Uh, try to perceive that one isn't, you know, a few inches further away from the pelvis or closer toward the pelvis. You want to just feel uh, fairly confident that your feet are placed evenly and uh, symmetrically in relationship to one another. Push into the feet with the pelvis a few inches. Move the tailbone and the buttocks away from the lumbar spine and set down. Push in the elbows and the back of the head and move the frontal ribs toward the navel and set down. So Chirandrasana, lift the right foot up and put the right ankle on your left knee. And you can stay here. This is sufficient. You can put the left foot up on a block if you had one, or up on the sofa or against a wall. Or you can, if it's available, you can reach and grab your pants. Maybe you can interlace your hands behind the back of the left thigh. And some of you will be able to bring your hands to the shin. It depends a little bit on your proportions and also on what feels safe in your joints. Sometimes in this pose, I like to be very quiet and still, kind of like a, a napping cat, quiet but alert. Other times it feels better to just do some very small little uh, rocking movements side to side with my pelvis and my legs. 
particularly on days when the sensations are a little more intense. Sometimes it feels better to rock a little, come in and out of the intensity. Good, release, left foot down, just the right foot on the floor, and then raise the left ankle to the right knee. The size can be quite different, of course, so um, try not to project experience of sight A as a um, assumed outcome on sight B. Be open-minded. And stay here. You can put the right foot up on a little bit some height or reach and grab your pants, the back of your right thigh, or all the way through to the right shin. Uh, one of my favorite quotes uh, from Mr. Deskchar, it's in his translation of the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. He says, make yourself open to fresh perception. I think about that quote a lot, and it's a challenge because it's so easy to come at experiences of individuals and relationships with uh, all the all the impressions of our previous interactions and obviously there's some way to carry the intelligence of what we've learned and also uh, also make ourselves open to fresh perception good and release put the right foot down put the left foot down again keep repeating this action push into the feet Lift the pelvis slightly, move the buttocks away from the lumbar spine and set the pelvis down. Push from the elbows and the back of the head and then move the frontal ribs toward the navel. Another way you can think of that is move the back ribs away from the low back. And now heel toe your feet as wide as your mat. If you don't have a sticky mat, you're gonna have to just go a bit wider than your hips are. Be on the generous side with that. If you have a sticky mat, move your feet wide enough until with the soles of your feet you can feel the edges of your mat. You can feel the textural uh, edge of the mat. Extend your arms out wide to the sides like a T. And now keep your feet wide as they are, and we'll do these windshield wipers. So keep those lower frontal ribs moving toward the navel, buttocks moving toward the heels, and move both knees over to the left, and both knees over to the right. And just let yourself sort of uh, sway back and forth. Not a total abdication of responsibility in the midsection, so stay toned in the abdominal area. But do let the weight of the legs exert their influence. So as the legs go to one side, they gently tug on and influence the tissues and the pelvis and the hips and the lower spine. And just let the pelvis and the base of the spine sort of tag along the thread. And then coming back to the center, you can keep the feet wide. We'll just do some very basic pelvic tilts to get this simple action, but and then we'll put it to use again in the windshield wipers. So first is the posterior tilt. So pull your pubic bone towards your navel and your lower frontal ribs and your sternum move towards your navel. So the tailbone starts to lift and lift up off the floor and you'll feel the buttocks and the hamstring muscles engage and the lower back is really pressing into the mat. And then reverse that Move the tailbone as if it was going to dig into the floor. Draw your navel in and lift the lumbar spine up off the floor. So it's the arch there. 
Here we go. Cross the rear tilts. Sweep the tailbone away like an arrow moving away from the spine and the pubic bone like an arrow moving toward the navel. And then anterior tilt with the pelvis tips toward the front body. Move the pubic bone away from the navel. Move the tailbone into the floor. Draw your belly in so the belly is long but not release, not collapse. And then come back to neutral. Rest for a moment. And we're going to combine that pelvic action in with the windshield wipers. So let both knees come over to the right. And then take your right ankle to the left thigh. So sorry, your right sole of your right foot to your left thigh, right by the knee. So you're sort of uh, stepping on your own thigh. And the knees will move a lot here. So here first we'll do a anterior tilt. So start to stick, quote, stick your butt out, draw your belly in and hinge deeply in the hip. Pull the left knee into the right foot and get some good abdominal length and action. And then keep, see if you can keep that strength in the belly. Push the left foot into the floor. Lift the left foot like bridge pose and move the buttocks away from the lumbar spine and let the right foot guide the left knee away from the pelvis staying strong in the belly strong in the glutes try it again lift the knees quote stick the butt out so the butt comes toward the floor draw your belly in and you'll feel a good contraction in the hip flexor and here I can get some good access into my belly. I can really contract and feel long and engaged. See if you can keep that and then push through the launch the ball, the left foot, the left big toe into the floor. Lift the left buttocks up like you're doing kind of a half bridge pose and move the knees away from the pelvis and toward the floor. Think of the knees really reaching away. They will come down, but it's like the away action that you want to feel. Good, and then release. Put both feet down. Second side. Let both knees slump to the left. Left foot onto the top of the right thigh. Just a gentle pressure. So that's an active contact and not a passive contact. Push the foot like you're trying to. Uh... I remember one time when I was in junior high, we had wet cement at my parents' house and we wanted to, my friend and I wanted to leave our handprints in the cement. But then I don't know what happened. There was some drama and I probably started crying or something. I don't know what. I remember that it was like a deal. And anyway, in the end, the cement was too dry. But we could use a stick and we could trace our handprints. So that was a very clever compromise that my mom came up with. It's still there at her house. So you kind of want to feel that the left foot is trying to push in the right thigh, but the cement is drying and the right knee pushes back. Now, anterior to lift the knees a little stick your tush out and feel the hip right hip flexor contract draw your belly and be long and active in the midsection and then so you can keep that strength in the belly and then push the ball of the right foot into the floor lift the right buttock up into the body like bridge pose and get long move the knees away from the femurs feel like they're lengthening especially the right femur getting longer and then again, knees up, stick your tush out, strong belly, long belly, and then push through the whole inside edge of the right foot, inner heel, big toe, ball, big toe, smear that into the floor, draw the right buttocks, engage the right buttocks, feel like a bridge pose on the right side of the body, long belly, use the sole of the left foot on the right thigh to direct the right knee away from the right arm. Come back up. Release. And we'll do a little uh, abdominal fun while we're here. So I'll lift the feet, lift the shins so the shins are parallel to the floor. Take your hands. This is a great one. I learned this one from my friend Emily years ago. Grateful to her for that. Hands on your thigh bones, right near the knees with the fingers pointing up. You're not 
grabbing your knees to provide support. In fact, you're going to just make an extra challenge. Straighten the arms so the elbows aren't bent and start to push your hands into the knees and then draw back, energize the knees into the hands and then add a little, a little twist, scoop the tailbone toward the ceiling. Find a sustainable effort. We'll do it again. Could include ab work in your life, even though it might not be like, you know, on your, these are a list of things I love. Ab work might not be on there, but it's good for all of us. So again, push in the feet, lift the pelvis a little bit, move the buttocks away from the lumbar spine. That is the feeling you really want to cultivate in this action. Now push in the elbows. Move the back ribs away from the lumbar spine so you have a sense that the sternum and the frontal ribs are coming toward the navel and the pelvic rim and the pubic bone are coming toward the navel. The navel is like a black hole drawing energy towards it. Shins up. Push the hands into the thighs. Pull the knees. Scoop the tailbone. Other Supta Padangusthasana, so you might want a strap for this one. If you have a strap, if you don't have a strap, you can use a scarf or really anything long that you have around the house. So I would guess the chances are pretty high that you have something strap like that you could use. Even a you know, dishcloth could probably work, depending on uh, how long you need it to be. <laughs> so make your strap pretty long. Bend both knees, put your left foot on the floor, raise the right leg up and put the strap on the ball of the right foot. Not in the arch, not on the heel. And those are not incorrect placements. Just that each placement of the strap leads to a different result. So for today, put it on the ball of the foot. Keep the left foot on the floor and just gently press down and energize the skin on the sole of the right foot from the arch toward the toes. And you can even take your hands a little bit wider. I don't know if you can see that my hands are sort of wide. And I'm gonna just gently, like I'm leading a horse, gently pull the skin of the foot away from the arch so I can get the momentum of the toes, of the foot heading toward the toes. And then I'm gonna to try to release the head of my right thigh bone away. This is done uh, without force. I'm just trying to offer uh, loving suggestions to my body and seeing which of those suggestions it will pick up on. You can keep the left knee bent, or if it's available, or if it is healing, you can extend the left leg out straight. I remember when I was a kid, we didn't have a television, which was a source of uh, great angst for me as a youngster. Uh, but sometimes I was at a friend's house and I'd watch TV at their house, and uh, there were these commercials back then for Fruit Loops, the, you know, the sugar cereal, and the, the mascot of Fruit Loops, it was this toucan named, I think it was Toucan Sam, and he was really colorful and he had a big toucan beak. And he would be like, these are cartoons, of course, animated, and he would be uh, in the jungle and he would smell the Fruit Loops, which I think were like animated, like a rainbow wave wafting aroma through the air, through the jungle air. 
and he would follow that smell. And I think that was like their motto or something, you know, like follow that smell. And uh, I think of that sometimes in these yoga poses. So bend your right knee, raise your left leg up. Again, the strap is on the ball of the right foot. Right leg bent, or a ball of the left foot, I'm sorry. Right leg bent on the floor. Put a little pressure into the right foot. And then use your hands and gently uh, encourage and nudge the skin of the left foot away from the arch and toward the toes. So I think of my foot, my little toucan Sam, in pursuit of an aroma in the direction that my head is pointing. And then I think of the very top of my left thigh bone where it meets the pelvis in pursuit of a scent at the foot end of my yoga mat. And I just think of them sort of gently pursuing something of their own accord. And if it's appealing, you can extend the right leg out straight on the floor. The idea is to not push or coerce the body, but to make the growth and activation feel like the body's idea for itself. Actually, pretty minimal use of the arms, strong use of the abdomen. Still, I'm drawing a pubic bone slightly toward the navel, lower frontal ribs toward the navel. Black hole is in effect. And then we release. Bend both knees. You can set your strap aside. Bend both knees. Feel and perceive the feet are placed evenly. Push into the feet, lift the hips a little, buttocks away from the lumbar spine. Push in the elbows and the back of the head, back ribs away from the lumbar spine, and sit down and feel that quiet containment in the midsection. And then walk the feet right together. And then soles of the feet together, knees apart. Let your knees open out into Supta Baddha Tadasana. And if it feels better for you, for some of you, it might be that your knees are, your knees or your hips need some support. You could use blocks or warmed up or uh, folded up blankets under your hips. Bend your hands in towards your body so your hands can rest on your chest or your abdomen. Breath soften. back up to vertical, soles of the feet on the floor. And walk your feet back again, about hip width apart. And then we'll do uh, Jatara Parivartanasana with the knees bent. So extend your arms out wide laterally. Draw the knees in towards your chest. And arms, without using the arms, draw the knees in towards your chest. And we do this in an active way, and then we'll do it with support. So take those lower frontal ribs and move them toward the navel, and then take the pubic bone and move it toward the navel, and maybe even scoop your tailbone so the pelvis starts to lift up off the floor. So the back is rounded, but it's rounded because the abdominal area is actively contracting. Draw your knees over the left, toward your left elbow, and then 
press the knees to the left, draw them in toward the armpit. And that is not a metaphor. You try to tuck yourself into an active little ball. Come back. Knees toward the chest, knees to the right, and tuck in, try to fit your knees into the pocket of your elbow and your armpit. Come back up. Knees to the chest, let the buttocks be lifted. Knees to the left, if you can keep the knees together, that's good form. Knees to the chest and knees to the right. If you keep the soles of the feet alive and alert, Build consistent energy in the legs. Knees to the chest. Again, to the left. Tuck. Back to the center. Knees to the chest. Front ribs to the navel. Oh, twist it. Tuck. Back to the center. And then release. We'll do it again. Uh, and this time we'll rest. So if you have a blanket or block or something, you might like to use it for this pose. Arms out wide, push in the feet, lift the buttocks up, move the buttocks away from the low back and set the pelvis down. Lower frontal ribs toward the navel, pubic bone toward the navel. Without using the arms, draw the knees towards you. Take a big breath in and exhale and bring the knees over to the left until they come to the floor or come to a pillow or you could use a folded blanket. We would like the knees to stay together for this pose. And also we would like the knees to stay near us. So they're still sort of thinking about or corresponding uh, with the armpit rather than having the knees drift open, which puts a very different and a less inviting pressure at the base of the spine. And see if you can Put some life in the toes and again stretch the skin from the arches towards the toes and the soles of the feet. Draw the belly in and make the midsection long and alert. Another option that feels nice in some bodies is to put the support between the knees rather than under the lower shin. So you might Draw the legs back up, bring the feet down to the floor, push in the feet and centrally position the pelvis so it feels neutral. Without using the arms, draw the knees toward the chest, stretch and activate the feet, lower frontal ribs toward the navel, pubic bone toward the navel, the buttocks starts to lift, bring both knees over to the right. And the legs are supported, but there's a, a quiet action. Like if you think of the sort of gradual glacial drift, or like, um, you know, we live in earthquake territory here in Santa Cruz, and there's this idea that these tectonic plates of the earth are moving very slowly, but it does add up. And you want to feel that the tectonic plates of your knee are still moving toward the armpits. They have their eyes on the armpits and not on drifting toward the feet. Stretch the skin on the soles of the feet toward the toes. Long and active through the abdominal midsection. And back to the center. And then if you were using something between your knees, you can remove that. Bring the feet down. And once again, push into the feet, lift the hips, move the buttocks away from the low back. Push in the elbows and the back of the head. Move the back ribs away from the low back and sit down. We'll just do a little rolling. Rolling is uh, fun and silly, and also a little bit more active than you might imagine. You can Hold the backs of your knees, you can hold your shins, some of you maybe even can hook your forearms around and grab your forearms. So it just depends again on your proportion and on what, how much flexion your joints are in for. Uh, you can do whatever is available to you. 
before you hold with your hands, release your arms, we'll do it in an active way. Stretch the skin on the feet from the arches toward the toes. Take the lower frontal sternum, the lower frontal ribs, the base of the sternum, toward the navel, and look at the bone toward the navel. And see how much you can use your own abdominal muscles to draw the knees in toward your armpits, and then take hold. So you're using arms to support abdominal action and not as a total sucking it forward. And then as you're ready, you can lift the feet a little, get some momentum, take some deep tries to get going, and gradually rock yourself back under your shoulders, up to balancing. And see if you can smooth out and articulate the movement in the spine. If you notice there are parts of your back that move in big clunky chunks, that's not uncommon. See then if you can look to the front body and activate, contract and articulate the front body with more accuracy to help smooth the curvature in the back. If you enjoy this work, you can also do it without the arms, which makes it more abdominal and more active. When you come up onto your hips, see if you can do it without having to lose your balance and put your heels down. So again, the glacial drift of the knees is toward the chest. The tectonic plates of the knees are moving toward the chest. And then come down onto your back. Hold your shins or your legs. And this time, just sort of have a little tiny baby wiggles laterally, left and right. down on the floor. Push into the feet, lift the hips a tiny little bit, buttocks away from the lumbar spine. Push into the elbows and the back of the head, moving back the skin of the back ribs away from the lumbar spine and step down again. If you need to adjust your blanket, then adjust your blanket under your head. Bring the feet even a little wider and let the knees knock in toward one another. Bend your arms towards the body, rest your hands on the, on the body. And just take a few breaths here, relax the jaw, let the eyes close. Just like we did at the very beginning, bring the knees up and apart, draw the right knee towards your chest, and extend the left leg out straight at the floor. This time, you can put a little arms into it gently, draw the right knee towards you, and really reach through that left leg. Really, it's really looking for something. It's Japan and Sam following the aroma and this aroma of fruit loops. Lengthen the left leg with some curious vigor. Good. And then release right foot down. Draw the left knee in. Lower frontal ribs towards the navel. Extend the right leg out. Use the amount of arm strength that feels helpful to draw the knee toward you. And really reach exploratory with the right leg. See how much life and reach and vigor you can get into it not force but curiosity be inquisitive in the straight leg and then release bend both knees last time pushing the feet pelvis up buttocks away from the low back pushing the elbows in the back of the head frontal ribs toward the navel back ribs away from the navel and sit down and then come into Shavasana. One leg at a time, extend your legs out. 
let the soles of the feet release and drop apart. If you tend to have a lot of sway and curvature in your low back, we obviously addressed that a lot today, something that can be helpful is to reach with your hands and grab the side of the sticky mat near your pelvis and use your arms to push and straighten your arms and that just literally takes the friction of the fabric of your hands and the skin of your buttocks and draws it away from the low back. And then let your arms come up to the side, your palms up. Just for a quick moment, press your shoulders toward the floor to create some opening in there see if you can keep the opening but release that pressing action the jaw relax tongue down away from the roof of your mouth and be in shavasana Gently bringing your attention back to your breath. And then want to come out of Shavasana to startle any sudden movements. Just deepen your breath. See if you can carry the mood of Shavasana with you. Bring the arms in toward the body. And bring the knees and bring the feet back to the floor. And roll to your side. And then press yourself up and come up to sit. like you can sit up on your height or support and sit in any position that's comfortable for you. And we'll end with one round of all. Thank you.